Hi all, this is Rahul from Way to Automation, and the good news is that Selenium 4 is going to hit the market very soon. So the current uh, Selenium 4 version is at the Alpha 3 stage, and many new implementation has been done, uh, which every automation test engineer must know who is working on Selenium in their project. So here are a couple of uh, uh, features which uh, I have listed down, uh, which are introduced in uh, the new Selenium version, that is Selenium 4. So now uh, the architecture of Selenium 4 is no uh, more going to support the JSON wire protocol. So if you are already working on Selenium uh, 3 or Selenium uh, 2 uh, with WebDriver, you must be knowing that all the communication with the browser was done uh, using the JSON wire protocol. So if you uh, want to see what JSON wire protocol is, you can simply type uh, JSON wire protocol and you're going to see uh, the JSON wire protocol of uh, Selenium from here. And which is nothing which uh, uh, generally exposes the REST API, all the communication is done uh, using the CRUD operations, that is uh, the, the post, uh, the get, delete, right, so all these uh, uh, were actually the mode of communication with the browser in case you want to capture a screenshot you need to uh, send a command using this session then a navigation of the url will be again a get request or a post request uh, to navigate to a url then for every every operation that we actually perform on a web page was uh, tied up with this json wire protocol which is uh, no more uh, be there in uh, your uh, Selenium 4. So Selenium 4 will now be using the W3C protocol completely uh, for browser dri uh, driven uh, communications. So the earlier version of Selenium used JSON wire protocol uh, where, uh, I mean, which actually required encoding and decoding of the APIs. Whereas uh, Selenium 4 will now uh, be using a standard W3C protocol to communicate between the driver and the browsers. So the advantage is that W3C protocol does not require encoding or decoding of the API. And the test will be directly communicating with the browser because all major browser vendors are on W3C itself. And uh, the second feature is uh, that now there will be Chromium based support for both Chrome and Edge browsers. So now uh, uh, the Edge browser and the Chrome browser class will directly going to extend uh, the Chromium. And also uh, the native support for Opera and Phantom JS will be removed going forward. And the users uh, who need to test Opera can rely on Chrome since Opera is based on Chromium itself. Right. So the another uh, new feature uh, that is introduced for opening uh, a new tab or a new window. Right. So uh, we can now actually uh, do a tab browsing as well. We can perform actions on a new tab. So while uh, uh, we are on a on a let's say uh, a base window, we can uh, call a method and we can uh, open a new tab and navigate to uh, a particular URL on that tab and perform action on that tab. Right, so we'll be uh, uh, looking at uh, this uh, practically. I'll be creating a separate uh, video where we'll be handling uh, new tabs and new pop-ups using Selenium 4. So we're gonna look at uh, the detailed example on this. And many deprecated methods are removed from the API. Proper documentation has been done based on W3C standards. And uh, the next thing, uh, it is very important, I mean, the addition of uh, uh, relative locators. So there, there are new uh, uh, friendly locators. Initially, it was named as friendly locators. Now uh, they have renamed it to relative locators. So there are new lo locator strategies being introduced where you can uh, find the element uh, with a particular tag name, uh, which could be above a particular element below a particular element, to left of a particular element, to right of a particular element, or to, uh, to near a particular element, right? 
So this is uh, very important at times uh, we may have seen some exceptions like element interrupted exception or element is not clickable at this point, right? Where we uh, used to create some dynamic XPath, some complex XPath by uh, combining siblings, parent uh, and child hierarchy, right? So this relative locator will gonna help us a lot at that point of time where we can straightforwardly tell that this element is right of this particular element. So click on that element or type in that element which is left of that particular element. So this is what uh, the relative locators are. We are actually going to see a practical example on this in our next lecture. I'll gonna uh, record a video where I'll be practically showing how uh, we can uh, work with the re relative locators using latest Selenium 4. Right. So then uh, take screenshot, uh, this interface has been enhanced to now capture element screenshot as well. Although uh, this functionality is available in our current Selenium uh, 3.141.59, which is the official version as of today. But uh, this feature is actually uh, supposed to be launched in Selenium 4, but it is already stable and working fine. So they have also, you, you're gonna see the code is also showing up in Selenium uh, 3 latest version as well, right? So uh, basically, uh, if we want to capture element screenshot, uh, when while capturing full page screenshot, we simply uh, call this interface typecast it with driver reference and then call the method get screenshot as with output type as file. So this actually uh, generates a full page screenshot. And now the only change that you need to do is to capture an element screenshot. Instead of this driver, you need to pass on the element over here. So just pass on the element and it will actually gonna capture the element screenshot, right? So this is what your take screenshot uh, interface and in, is enhanced with a functionality of capturing element screenshot as well. Right, uh, then uh, there is an API added to interact with your Chrome Chrome Dev Tools as well. So Chrome Dev Tools are the one that when you right click on your browser, inspect, and you see many options of console, network, and a number of other things on your Chrome browser. So you should be able to capture those functionalities as well. So we'll go and look at the practical example on the Chrome Dev Tool as well. Then the most important part that I liked a lot is. Uh, the Selenium Grid 4, which is enhanced with such a functionality that all the configuration of Grid is very, very simple now. So the new Grid has been launched. If you navigate to uh, the website, if I take you to the website uh, over here. So this is uh, where uh, like Simon Stewart has actually added a documentation on Selenium Grid 4, and this is very, very easy. So Grid can simply be launched with the help of a standalone uh, uh, mode. And when you run this standalone mode, both hub and nodes will be configured at the same time, right? So there are a couple of ways how you can configure a grid. We have a detailed lecture on it. One is a standalone mode. Second one is uh, the hub and the node like we were you we were doing it uh, initially in selenium 3 as well so same uh, is there in selenium 4 but with some enhanced features and uh, the last one is fully distributed system where you can set up a session map on a different machine distributor on a different machine then a router on a different machine and a node on a different machine so we can have a fully distributed system created as well. And uh, the features are also enhanced to support uh, Docker as well. So these are a couple of things that uh, we will be uh, looking at uh, the practical implementation of Grid uh, in the next lecture, right? So these are a couple of things which are going to hit the market very soon uh, with Selenium uh, 4 uh, launch. Although these things are already there, you can try out these things before the official version is actually launched. 
And uh, you may face uh, some issues, some bugs or challenges while working on Selenium 4 at this moment because this is at the alpha stage. Uh, but 90% of the things are working fine. I have tried uh, like automating most of the websites, handling most of the features with latest Selenium 4 and I've seen most of the things are working fine, right? So don't worry about it if you uh, encounter any issue, at least give it a try, give it a try with all these features because Selenium 4 is going to hit the market very soon, right? So that's all uh, in this lecture. In the, in the next lecture, we're going to look at the practical, practical implementation of uh, all these features while automating a website. So we're going to see how to work with the relative locators. We're going to see how to open tabs and perform testing on a new tab. We're going to see the detailed configuration of Selenium Grid for capturing screenshot and other features as well. Right? So just stay tuned and uh, I'll see you in the next lecture. And if you like this video, just uh, hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, to get more updates on uh, Selenium new videos and other automation testing tool videos. Thank you.